Welcome in to a new show on the SDH Network. I'm Jason Longshore, and this is the Panther Prowl. We'll cover Georgia State soccer for the 2024 season, both the men and the women here on this show. The men's season, a little more time to percolate. You're going to get your season preview next week on Brett Surrency's group of Panthers. But today, you're going to hear all about Ed Joyce's group of Panthers. The longtime women's head coach goes into the 2024 season with a lot of expectations for the Georgia State women's team. Their season kicks off on Thursday at home, downtown Atlanta, the GSU Soccer Complex, also known as the Cage. Chattanooga is the opponent. Kickoff will be at 7 o'clock. You can attend for free, and it's highly recommended. Such a cool atmosphere in downtown Atlanta and really good soccer on display. If you can't make it out, you can watch with me. I'll be on the call on ESPN+, Plus, your home for all of Georgia State's athletics. So let's get into the 2024 season for the women. In this show, as we get ready for the season kickoff, you're going to hear from 2023 Sunbelt Freshman of the Year, Aliyah Fadul. You're going to hear from this season's captains, Callie Mahan and Olivia Shaw. But up first, you're going to hear from Coach Ed Joyce talking about how he's put this team together, what his expectations are, and a very difficult schedule ahead for Georgia State, and that is by design. Here's my conversation from Media Day with head coach Ed Joyce. Early days in preseason, how is the, the group coming together with some new faces uh, coming into the team? Really well. Um, obviously, our, our camp environment is good, so whereas you know, lots of our players are around our ID camps, so whereas the new players come in and they kind of meet them beforehand, so we get rid of a, a bit of the, the awkward silences that happen sometimes from time to time in team building stuff. So that's been really helpful this year. We've now got a full cycle of kids that have been to two or three ID camps who come in. So really, the only ones we're really kind of bringing out of, out of nowhere are the internationals. So it's been it's been a really good group It's been well. really cool to see how the, the culture of your team has come together. They all get along. They all fit together really well, it seems like. How do you recruit a group of players like that or is it a little bit of luck with once they get in the door i think we do our we do our best um do our best to do some screening when it comes to the recruiting process um when they're on campus we use our players to try and see if they're the sort of people that will um fit into what we do um but ultimately we're not going to know until they hit the ground so i give the biggest thanks to our players because our players keep the culture going you know so we have a culture that is very much team driven the way we play um, so the players aren't necessarily driven that way, usually, uh, you know, either adjust or don't choose us, to be honest. So we're in, we're in a good spot with that. A couple of captains this year in Cali and Olivia, how important are they in kind of setting that culture with your group? Huge. Um, Cali is a fifth year. She's been in since, you know, 2020. So COVID year is her first year. And, you know, luckily we had a pretty good atmosphere then. Uh, but every year she's been a massive part of what we do to keep it where it's at. Um, but you know Olivia as well. She's interesting because I mean she's not a ninety-minute player for us, but you know, in training she is. We train for ninety minutes. She's ninety percent focused, holding other people accountable, holding herself accountable, um, and it's definitely like our vocal leader. Whether it be in the pitch or or maybe on the sideline from time to time as well, she definitely leads in, wants to win, which is important. The way you guys play, you end up using a lot of players in the roster throughout the season and throughout each match. How important is it to, to keep everybody engaged and involved? Important and difficult. You know, I think it's important and difficult. So we, we try and touch on things every single day that make our culture competitive. Um, like you said, we do try and play, you know, 17-ish probably a game um, in certain positions, but there's other positions where we don't necessarily change as much. You know, in the back three and goal, we don't change so much. So um, it is kind of challenging to to make it happen, but it's our job in training to make it feel as if players are, get developed. And our thing here in recruit, we tell players, you're not going to come here and stay where you are. You're going to come here and get challenged, and hopefully for you, it ends up with you playing the amount of minutes that you want. But if not, you know, stay in the boat, we're going to make you better, and you'll get what you deserve. But our biggest thing is, you know, don't care if you're a freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, like, you've got to make the 11. Once you get on campus, the age is irrelevant. Tough schedule this year. Very aggressive in, yeah. in the scheduling. Uh, yeah. How did everything come together in that? No, we just felt like, you know, the conference that, that we're in is is definitely burgeoning conference and we're in the right direction to where is we're 
we're going towards a two bid league. Had two bids last year. Arguably could have had three. You know, to whereas we feel as if we put ourselves on that schedule, and we certainly have nothing to lose. You know, we feel like we can compete at that level. We play the brand of football that you know we think it's fun to watch, it's fun to play in, but also it can cause problems. So I mean, we feel as if we're in a good place. Um, balance is important in regards to the schedule. The regional balance is really important to me, and we're really blessed that the SEC is right in our footprint. So. Now this year, with you know Florida and South Carolina coming to us, is a huge opportunity for us to bring a bit of notoriety to to where we play, which is a fantastically unique facility right in the, right in the middle of the city. Gary Atlanta United fan has seen it from the <laughs> front from the Martyr train, and then obviously you know going to Old Miss as part of a return in a game that we fared pretty well in last year with some big injuries. So you know for us the conference is hard. You know we're going to go to JMU away, Old Dominion coming to us, South Alabama coming to us, and we have Orange East, which is tough side of the bracket and then mm -hmm. we have pretty much uh you know the, the west as well the ones that are coming to us and the ones that we're going to are, are going to be really challenging also so we have to prepare for that you know and i think in the past the balance was uh, wasn't quite there so we wanted to try and make sure we got a balance this year to challenge our players when they get to these big games it's just another game you mentioned home field and it is such a unique venue how special is it on a on a big night with a packed crowd in there and how loud and intense the cage can be it's unique. I mean, it's like we're, I'm, I've been here a long time. So I've been here from the days of Panthersville when, you know, it was just a different setup, you know, so now we're in the city. Our girls get to live what they do every day on the pitch as well. So every day they're in and amongst the city, they get to look up, they score a goal, they're seeing the same thing. So, I mean, I think it's huge. I think it's a tough place to come and play because it is unique. It's tight. You know, it's, uh, the fans are close to the field. Your coach is close to the field. <laughs> so a lot of the times, like, we get to, have a unique environment that you know we're fortunate to have we love that it's grass we love that it's a good surface um but yeah i think that's it's it's given us our identity which is that we are a city school we're a school in the city we love it and uh you know it allows us to show off a facility to potential recruits and fans as well we've talked about it before the the growing atlanta soccer scene and how you guys are a big part of that how do you connect what you're doing with the Georgia State program more to the the larger soccer community here in Atlanta? I mean, for us, I mean, I think obviously Atlanta United has done a great job. You know, it's massive, put a massive amount of attention across the board from youth to, to adults across all different um, you know backgrounds within the city. You know, but I think where we've got a bit of a hole in the city is was women's football. You know, Decatur FC have filled that mold fantastically well. Impact have done a good job a bit further north, but like from the fall season, there isn't really anything for young girls to come out and watch and see someone that looks like them do the same thing. So I mean, for us, we we like to fill that void. You know, we do a lot of interaction with the local clubs to get girls to come out. Um, definitely want other clubs that haven't been involved to feel free to reach out to us. Uh, you can email me directly, and we'll get you involved. And it helps our girls too. Like our girls get fans, and they get little girls wanting their autographs and stuff like that. That's a fantastic motivator for our kids too so i mean for us we feel as if we are kicking on from atlanta united and we're definitely tapping into the success you guys have had you know um publicizing what they're doing but you know we feel like there's still work to be done you know it's the, it's the largest you know, participant sport among young girls in the country and we're one of the hotbeds of it and we just we're just happy to kind of bring a little of what we do to people and hopefully be entertaining up next on the Panther Prowl, it's the captains of this year's Georgia State team, Callie Mahon and Olivia Shaw, talking about leadership, talking about how this group gets along, and talking about the program as a whole. Here's Olivia and Callie. So very early in preseason, groups kind of come in together, but it seems like there's a lot of chemistry on and off the field with this group. Just as captains, talk about how important it is for each of you guys to set that standard of chemistry in the group. You want to just wait with you? You can go ahead. Um, I think chemistry is honestly one of the most important things, to be completely honest. I think when the team has good chemistry, the stuff on the field comes a lot more natural. Um, I think overall we do try to implement a lot of team bonding into um, preseason specifically, um, just to try and get everyone together and make sure that freshmen are – um, understanding what the team is about and making those connections so that the rest of it comes a lot easier. Um, and I think, honestly, when you have a tighter team, you just play better. It's just how it is. Um, but, yeah, um, we have really tried to pinpoint that this year and have made that, like, a big goal of ours. So excited to see um, when season starts how that plays out.
What's the most important things about being a leader in your mind, Callie? I think it's just like helping your team, like when things get hard, like when we're down 1 0 and it's a conference game and there's 10 minutes left, like you keep picking up your team. You tell them, like, it's fine. Like last week we had an inner squad and my mm -hmm. team was down 3 0. And I was like, guys, I have time. Keep it 0 0. Keep it in your mind. I ended up coming back winning 4 3. So I think just keeping a level head, you know, leading them, helping them. It's a really challenging schedule this year for you guys. Uh, three SEC schools, the, the Sun Belt gets better and better every year. How important is it to kind of manage the schedule game by game in your mind? I think it's massive. I think looking ahead can kind of nip you in the butt sometimes. Um, and if we're looking at this like, oh, well, we have a game tomorrow, but oh, we're playing South Carolina in two weeks. Like tomorrow is just as important as that game. Um, and I think it's really important to just take it game by game because every single game, especially when we start conference, is so important. Um, so we just need to be able to keep focus on what's important and not look ahead. Um, yeah. Callie, talk a little bit about the the vibe for home games when it's packed, a big game, big crowd, and it's loud. Just what is that feeling like on the field? Honestly, the feeling is like unmatchable. I it's I don't even know how to describe it in words. Honestly, like the, the adrenaline going through your veins, but it's almost just like, oh, I got this. Like this is gonna be a good game, just because like the crowd, the feeling, like the home field and everything, and like your teammates all around you. You have all the girls. Like it's not just a travel squad. So it just it's an unmatchable feeling. One of the things that's always stuck with me, like calling both teams, the men and the women, is I don't really see this at a lot of schools. Y'all get along. Like, Y'all support mm -hmm. one another oh, so yeah. much. Is that just organic? Is it just being in the same building? Like, how does that come together? I think it's a little bit of both. Yeah, honestly. honestly. <laughs> like, for a part of it, like, there are some guys at first that I was like, oh, I don't like those mm -hmm. guys, like, at all. But then, like, <laughs> as, the, as the season went on, I was like, wait, they're actually really nice guys. Yeah. And you get to know them, like, because you walk past them all the time, and you're like, oh, like, hey, and, like, they're really nice, though, and, yeah, I think mostly it's organic. Yeah, and I think it's really nice having a support system within, like, other athletes. Um, with being on SAC, I know we've really tried to implement, um, like, the support from other a athletics and um, different teams, and to have the men's team always with us, and we tried to do our best to go to their games as well. Like it's um, really just really nice to have, to be honest. And I think we do see them a lot, and we see them outside of soccer a lot. And I think it just creates a culture that just is really different than a lot of schools, to be completely honest. But I think it's great, and it's amazing to have a support system like that. It's on top of everything we already have. What do y'all love about playing in this type of system on the field? It's really unique. Um, you guys stand out compared to a lot of women's teams around the country and that dominate possession, dominate the ball. How much fun is it to play in that kind of system? It's so much fun. I like mm -hmm. it so much. I like Same. being able to get on the ball. I like being able to touch the ball. So, like, the way we play with all the possession-based, how we do it, it's a lot of fun. I enjoy it a lot. Um, Maddie, you got anything? No, I'm good. Um, uh, I got one. Um, you guys have a very international squad. Mm -hmm. um, how does that come together with players from, honestly, all over the world representing the school? So I think we are very fortunate to have a lot of diversity um, represented from our team. I think that it, when we talk about like playing styles and stuff like that, I think everyone kind of brings their own flair into our mold, in a sense. Um, so we have girls from Spain, um, Denmark, um, Canada. Goes, yeah, Canada. Um, and I really think it just allows us to be an even more personable team and have our own um, uniqueness to the way that we play as well as fitting into the playing style that we actually want to play. And I think um, it's just honestly, I think it makes us even closer as a team to be completely honest because you're getting to know people on a more personal level and just – learning things about them that you might not see day to day in your own life. So it's just really cool. Um, yeah. And beyond like winning championships, because I know that's the ultimate goal every <laughs> time, what are kind of the goals that you guys have set for this group this season? I think just, you know, like stay, stay together as a team is a really important one because like once there's any type of divide, like that's just when everything starts going downhill. I think just enjoying it. Like, that's a big thing. Like, it's our last year. Like, I just want to enjoy it, have fun. 
Closing it out on the Panther Prowl, the 2024 season preview. We're going to talk to the 2023 Sunbelt Freshman of the Year, who was also named last week as the Sunbelt Offensive Player of the Year in preseason and a member of the Sunbelt All-Conference team in preseason. Aliyah Fadul will lead the line often for Georgia State this year, expecting to add to her significant goal tally as a freshman. It's a big year for Aliyah, and she is ready for it. Here's my conversation from Media Day with Aliyah Fadul. Tell me about your freshman year, reigning freshman of the year. Um, just how quickly did everything come together for you in, in 2023? Um, I mean, freshman year, I could start off by saying it was super solid, but I'd be lying to you if I said I did it all by myself because. I mean, as the year went on, I met and got so close with all the girls. So like freshman year was great and freshman of the year was fantastic, but really I wouldn't be that player without my teammates. So that's it. <laughs> Tell me about the, the culture of the team, because you mentioned like everybody clicking off the field as well as on the 100%. field. That seems to be a really big thing with the group. Yeah. And I mean, as like a senior going into college, you're always nervous about like, oh, like I don't have friends there yet, or I'm not sure how the girls are going to be. And then seeing that there's 34 girls and we're all like clicking all together and there's not like little clicks here and there. I think like it helps us off the field. Fantastic. But even on the field, you could tell like the way we move the ball as a team is fantastic. When you describe the way that the team plays to, to people who haven't seen you guys play yet, how would you describe the style of soccer? The style of soccer? We definitely don't just play big. We like playing in between teams, keeping the ball. But I think overall, like, just to keep the ball, to score goals, to defend, like all of that is just hard work. It's great. It's determination. That's it. We're just a hardworking team. <laughs> the uh, the home field advantage that you guys have when it's full and it's loud and it's intense, how cool is it to play in the cage? When I tell you, it is my favorite feeling ever. Like after freshman year, like all summer, now that I'm a sophomore, all summer, I was like, oh my God, I can't wait to go back, play a home game hear the announcer say our name, see the city lights. Like, it was so awesome. Home games are untouched. They're amazing. So you guys have three SEC schools this season on the schedule. It's a really difficult schedule across the board. You know, mm -hmm. what does it take for you guys to have the season that you want? How are you going to have to manage that schedule? I mean, I don't even look at it as, like, SEC teams or Sunbelt teams. Like, there's just another team. And if we can come together and put in the hard work that we did last year, I think that – we take those, the SEC out of the equation, take it with a grain of salt and play our hearts out. That's really it. And then you take the Sun Belt and it's a really challenging conference, especially 100%. the Eastern half of it. Yeah. You know, um, what is the most important thing for you guys to get right on the field to have the success you want this season? I think clearing our minds. Like if we put too much pressure on ourselves and we go on the field and we're all tense and we're not having fun, like the instant we stop having fun and smiling and giggling, everything goes down so i think every game this season we'll take it like step at a time but i think we just like have good positive mindsets and that's it we get on the field and we do what we love you know perfect maddie you got anything what are some of your personal goals that you want to accomplish this season well my personal goals i mean definitely building on last year like i'd say i could definitely have popped in more goals had more assists just becoming a stronger overall player but i definitely want to get on the higher up on the leaderboard in the NCAA for scoring goals. Is Points. there a specific game that you're looking forward to the most this season, getting the chance to play it here at home? Um, I'd say Coastal Carolina, only because, I mean, I don't know if that's a home game this year, but last year that was my best game of the season. I'd say I had two goals and an assist, and the energy was high. Like, it was one of our first home games. We came out with a bang. Like, it was like 3 nothing, and, like, all of us were so hyped, so I'm looking forward to that again. Don't forget, the season starts on Thursday. Chattanooga making the trip down I-75 to face the Panthers. Kickoff at 7 o'clock. Tickets free of charge at the GSU Soccer Complex in downtown Atlanta. A great spot to see a match. Bring the kids out. You're going to see high-level women's soccer on display, and you're going to get a great atmosphere at the cage. If you can't make it out, I'll be with you on ESPN Plus, the home of Georgia State Athletics. And I'll be back with you next week as well. I had a chance at Media Day 
to preview the men's side of things with Georgia State. You'll hear from the captains and you'll hear from head, co head coach Brett Surrency on next week's Panther Prowl. Hope you've enjoyed it. Plenty more Georgia State soccer coverage to come throughout the 2024 season here on the SDH Network.